Hello class, this is Ms. Riggins with today's video on section 11.2 and polynomial functions. And the reason why um, this is section 11.2 is that 11.1 talked about power functions. And polynomial functions are basically a combination of several different power functions. So the general form of a polynomial function looks like this. I know some of you may be saying, wow, that looks very confusing, but it actually isn't that confusing. If we take a look at um, this, we have here broken up into, we call them terms in algebra, but if we take a look at it, all of these have something in common, which is that they represent different power functions. Remember, power function is a constant times the power of x a constant times the power of x, constant times the power of x, constant times the power of x, and here, right here, it's a constant, still times the power of x, but the power of x is zero, because we write polynomial functions generally in terms of decreasing powers of x. So this is x to the zero power. So the highest power is called the degree. Okay, the highest power is called a degree. So as you can see here, from this one, the degree is n. So we call n the degree. And if you notice, the degree for polynomials has to be a positive integer. Now for power functions, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. But for polynomials, it does have to be um, n, which is the highest power, has to be a positive integer, which is a positive whole number. Um, so, and, and the other restraint is that the first constant um, has to be a non-zero number, okay? So let me give you an example of a power function and see if you can tell me what the degree is. So P of X is equal to uh, negative 5 X to the 5th plus 3 X to the 4 plus 2. So as we can see here, the highest power is 5. So that means this is a degree 5 polynomial because this highest power right here is 5. Okay. Um, what do I know is about the constants? Well, the first constant is negative 5. The second constant is 3. What about the third constant? If you said 2, you're actually incorrect because we have some constants here in between x to the 4th and x to the 0 because remember this is x to the 0. So in this case, the constants, which we're going to rename coefficients, really go in order from we have a negative 5, we have a 3, sorry, but then we have here a 0 for the x to the third term, a 0 for x to the squared term, a 0 for x to the 1 term, and then the last term is a 2. So our coefficient, and I'm just not going to write out the whole word, are negative 5, 3, 0, 0, 0, 2. Okay? So now let's take a look at some common properties of these polynomials, general form polynomials, and some common terms as well. We call a term basically the same thing as a power function. So each term represents a power function. And the coefficients are the constants that are associated with each of the power functions in the polynomial. As we can see here, here are our coefficients. Now the leading term, and I need to correct the notes, I forgot to uh, leave off this one, is the leading power function with the highest power of x, and that's the leading term. And then the constant term is the term where the x is raised to the zero power, so that means the constant term is a zero, or sometimes we call this a naught. 
Yes, I don't know why does A not. Okay, so in this case, our leading term was negative 5x to the fifth. That was our leading term. Um, our coefficients, we already described that. And the constant term was 2 because x was raised to the 0 power here. Constant term. So let's look at several examples of polynomials of different degrees. This is a degree 2 polynomial, and if you recall, this is a quadratic function, or in the shape of the curve is a parabola. This is a degree 3 polynomial. This is another degree 3 um, polynomial, another type. This is a degree 4 polynomial, and this is another type of degree 4 polynomial. And let's see what happens. now. I call these humps, but this picture calls these bumps. So this degree polynomial has one bump. This degree three polynomial doesn't have any bumps, but this degree three polynomial does have two bumps. So the bumps are increasing. When I go to um, this degree four polynomial, it doesn't, um, it does have one bump, but as you can see over here, a different type of degree for a polynomial has three bumps. So as the degree increases, in general, so does the number of bumps and turns. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we're gonna have more than one x-intercept when I have more than one bump. Because every time you have a bump, that means that increases the number of x-intercepts where the graph crosses the x-axis. So if I take a look here, the graph crosses the x-axis in two spaces. Um, here, and it only crosses in one, crosses in once. But over here with the two bumps, it crosses it here, here, and here. So now we have three x-intercepts. As the bumps increase, so do the x-intercepts. Over here, we have one, two, three, four. So as you can see, as the bumps increases, so do the x-intercepts. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means that we're going to have what's called the zeros of the polynomials increases as the degrees increase. So some of you may not be familiar with the terminology zeros of polynomials. We call them zeros because the values of x of the polynomial which make the polynomial equal to zero. So again, I forgot to include this in the notes. So really let's specify that, the values of x which make this polynomial zero. And that's why it's a little bit tricky because sometimes you can easily identify the values of x, that's my zero, sorry, which make the polynomial zero because they are essentially the x-intercepts. I can see how many x-intercepts each polynomial has when I graph them because I'm just looking for how many times the graph crosses the x-axis. Well, every time the graph crosses the x-axis, the point on these graphs is whatever the x-intercept is, comma zero. So in other words, those x values make the function value output zero. So those are the x-intercepts. And you may also hear them recall or refer to as the roots of a factor of the polynomial. And in the next section, we'll talk about how to discover and identify exactly what the zeros of the polynomial are.